Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Lightning Jim. Original air date comes from us in 1952, and the title is A Parson Takes a Hand. Thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoy. Now for the adventures of Lightning Jim. <laughs> you see, little cheat. I saw you pull that card out of your sleeve. Not them harsh words, cowboy. There's no cheat at the gold horse. No cheat and why you pulled that card right out of your sleeve. And who's to say I did? I am a seeing so. Uh, you. Why you been losing all evening? I guess it's natural you try to bake off. I guess it's true what the parson says. When a man comes to the gold horse shoe, he's just asking to be robbed. You and your nuts. You're just a bunch of lying, thieving, cheating pole cats that have robbed your own mother. Take that back. Take it back, I hey, say. If you don't point that gun at me, I, I didn't mean to. Hey, do. what's going on here? Lucky, what you got your shooting iron out for? A uh, raid. Sure, Lucky, it's Reed, and I'm asking you a question. What you got that shooting iron out for? Well, boss, this hombre said I pulled a card out of my sleeve. Uh, getting careless, eh, Lucky? You there, you lost much money? I'm cleaned out. <laughs> cleaned out, eh? No, ain't that too bad. Here you do. Take over this card game. You, Lucky, you're coming with me. I want to talk to you. Now, now, look here, Reed. I was Shut up, Lucky. See if you can get this through your thick skull. I'm boss of the gold horseshoe, and what I say goes, see? And when I said no gunplay in here, that's just what I meant. No gunplay. But, boss, I was just... Keep that blabbling mouth of yours shut. I'm doing the talking. Gunplay don't bring in the customers, and we need business in here, not the law. Ah, uh, yeah, boss, yes, sir. Now, we've got to keep our customers, and the horseshoe's had plenty of trouble ever since that parson come to town. Those Sunday meetings of his have run us pretty stiff competition, but we'll get even with them for that. Hey, boss, here comes Kendall and Trigger. And I'll see you later, Lucky. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Well, boss, here we are. How's things going in the horseshoe? You can see for yourself, Kendall. Half the tables are empty. Come on, boys, into the back room. Got something special to tell us, boss? You bet I have. That fool Lucky pulled a gun in here tonight. Taking a lot for granted, ain't he? Sure is. What with that parson keeping most of the men out of the horseshoe here, and wooden-headed coyotes like Lucky driving out the few that do come in. Yeah, things sure are bad. Well, you all know what's been going on here lately. Ever since the parson come to town, he's been holding meetings and talking to the women. Till there's hardly a man in town who's come to the horseshoe. Time we was evening up the score. That's square. Yeah, that's so, boss. Right now, the parson's collecting money to build a church. Huh. Looks like he was here to stay. Say, boss... Say, if... hey, what's the matter with you, Trigger? I'm doing the talking. Hey, boss, I got an idea. An idea, huh? Yeah. Now, listen, Trigger, getting ideas is my business, not yours. Get that straight. But me and some of the boys was thinking that maybe if we pull the job, a total... You in on this, too, Kendall? Oh, well, well, boss, no, not exactly. You know, some of the men in town here have had a good chance to save up their money since they quit coming to the horseshoe. And i just been thinking that the bank must have a lot more money than they're used to taking care of. Now, maybe we could just uh, relieve them a part of it. So that's what you call thinking and getting ideas. Yeah. <laughs> the lucky thing you got me to do your head work for you. So you want to start robbing, eh? Sure, boss. Me and the boys are good at it. Good at it? Well, you clumsy fools, you'd have the law down on us inside of a week. No, I've got a better plan. One that'll help us get even with that parson. And first off, we're sticking to gambling. Ah, but there ain't no money in it. Not while the parson's in town, No. 
Suppose he was to disappear. Well, then we could go on just like we was before he came. And... Hey, boss, you don't mean it. Yeah, maybe we could talk to him and uh, <clears throat> sort of persuade him to leave town. <laughs> oh, that would be a good one, boss. And they do say, you know, that the Parsons collected a nice sum of money for building that new church. And <laughs> guess that would sort of help us square up accounts. Look here. If you're taking a Robin Parsons... You can count me out, Reed. Oh, no, we won't, Trigger. You'll come along with us. You see to that, eh, Kendall? Sure will. As for the money for the new church, well, maybe if you boys have got chicken-hearted all of a sudden, we can just call it insurance. <laughs> How's that, Kendall? <laughs> insurance that no other parson will come to town and start building churches. And when do we ride, boss? Well, next Sunday afternoon, the parson's having a meeting at Widow Burns. Now, here's what we'll do. As soon as the meeting's over, we'll pay the parson a little visit. Much of the credit of clearing up outlawry and crime in the Old West belongs to the parsons, preachers who turned their backs on comfortable Eastern congregations to bring the word of God to men and women in their new homes on the great Western Plains. But the criminal element also needed the stern law of the six-gun, wielded by such daring law officers as United States Marshal Lightning Jim Whipple and his deputy, Whitey Larson, whom we now find riding through a small western town on their way to Fort Anderson. You know, Whitey, it's pretty nice to go just riding along on a Sunday afternoon. You come to a town like this... See, Lightning, you... uh, why don't we stop and see the window? With the burn? Yo, oh, Whitey, well, might as well. The house is just up the road your way. Yo, say, that will be... Hey, sad. wait a minute, Whitey. How come you're so interested in the widow? Well, uh, <laughs> you see, I... I know you, Whitey. You're thinking of the widow's pie. <laughs> Yo, that's right. A <laughs> boy can sort can be good pie. Well, we better get to the widow's before your mouth starts watering. Yo, that's your daddy, you like that. Hey, give me some of like that. Oh, boy, fool. What, what's wrong, Whitey? You bring him many like that. There's stuff you don't know. Where? See there? Sitting in that buggy across the street there. You're right, Whitey. Come on, let's go over and talk to her. <laughs> Say, won't you be surprised? Who's that a wolf boy? Hello, Miss Burns. Yo, uh, how do you do, Mrs. Burns? Why, it's Lightning Jim and Whitey. <laughs> Where in the world did you come from? Well, man, we're just on our way back to Fort Ann. Yo, and uh, we were just going to stop at your house and, uh, and see if you was at home. Imagine meeting you like this. Now you're coming right home with me and have a snack to eat. That sure would be nice, Miss Burns. What do you think of that, Whitey? <laughs> Don't worry about Whitey. He got to thinking about them apple pies you baked last time we was yet. He could hardly wait to get up to your house. <laughs> Wait a what you see that for? Oh, <laughs> Don't mind him, Whitey. Yes, <laughs> he must have known you were coming. I baked three apple pies. Oh, oh mm. well, do you still keep them on the kitchen shelf? I certainly do. But now let's get back to the house. Get up, Bessie. Get up, old Come girl. on, Thunder. I'll split my apple pie with you. Leave I raised the pie on a horse. <laughs> oh, well, I'm afraid you'll find the house tore up a bit. But you won't mind that, I know. You see, the parson was holding a meeting in our parlor this afternoon, and the folks just left. I see. And I just got through taking old Ma Tucker home. The parson, eh? Uh, you know, I've been hearing a lot about him. Yo, I see. We the candy like to meet mm -hmm. him. Reckon you can do that as soon as we get to the house. He's boarding with me now. Oh, I see. He's home right now, straightening up the parlor. <laughs> He's a fine fellow, Marshal, and he'll sure be glad to see you. He could use some law and order in this town. That's so, ma'am? Yes, Lightning. The gambling, drinking, and wickedness that goes on in this town is something terrible. Yeah, you must be thinking of the gold horseshoe and that Andre Reed who runs it. That's just one of the places I'm thinking of. Well, from what you tell me, the parson's done wonders around here. Not nearly so much drinking and gambling going on. And he sure must have a tough job, though. Well, the parson says that most of our men are just fine. All they need is someone to remind them of their backbone, he says, <laughs> and they'll stay out of trouble for themselves. Well, I reckon there is some jaspers around these parts that don't like his work too well. Has he had any trouble? Not yet, Lightning. Well, he's been mighty lucky then, Miss Burns. Hope he don't get into nothing he can't handle. Don't you worry about that, Marshal. He ain't afraid. <laughs> You know, I think I'm going to like that part. Yo, I me mean, too, Latin. That sounds like he's got lots of fun. Yeah. I'll say he has. And plans, too. Have you heard, Lightning? The parson's planning to build a church here, too. Think of it. A church. Well, well, reckon this town needs one as bad as any. Y'all hope his good luck holds. I hope so, too. 
But the parson just got through telling me that with the money he collected today, we have nearly enough to start building. Ain't that wonderful? Uh, it's joyous, Miss Burst. Reckon the parson must be pretty proud of that bank account, huh? Bank account? Uh, he don't trust no bank money to the bank. No. There's been too many bank robberies around this part of the country. No, sir, Marshal. The parson keeps the money for the new church in his own little strong box. In your horse? Sure. Why not? Now, don't you worry. Nobody's going to get that money away from him. Well, I'd say the parson's taking a mighty big risk, but... Well, course... you and Whitey can talk to the parson about that yourselves later. Perhaps after supper, or in the morning. Now, now, but look here, Miss Burns, we ain't aiming to stay at your house. Don't you say a word, Lightning. You're going to stay at my house tonight, all right. You can have my son's room. You see, I ain't forgot what you two did for my son and me. No, oh, no, never mind that, Miss Burns, but we'd be glad to stay, won't we, Fighty? Oh, you bet, Lightning. Say, won't that be swell to sleep in a real bed? <laughs> Dig him up, Parson. Stay right where you are. Why? Why, who are you? Not so loud there. There's no one here. You needn't be afraid. Who are you? Never mind who we are. Take a look around, boys, and see if you can find the cash. All right. You there, keep an eye on the road. We want to make sure nobody will disturb it. All right, boss, we'll find it. We know he keeps it around here somewhere. Now you, Parson. We've come to even up scores with you. Take that gun out of my ribs. Now listen, Parson, I'm giving orders, not taking them. I'll jab this gun into your ribs and you'll like it. Well, what do you want? You're leaving town, Parson, and you're leaving now, as fast as we can take you. I'm not going. My work is here, and here I stay. <laughs> oh, so you're not going. No, sir. We'll see about that. I hey, can't find the money, boss. Well, look for it, you flat skulled maverick. I've been told a Parson don't trust banks. Mighty handy for us. Now look for that money. It's here somewhere. Oh, not boy. the money for the new church. Your sure, Parson. You catch on quick. <laughs> but you can't take that money. We can't, huh? I reckon you owe it to us for the money we've lost since you came to town. Well, what's the matter? We can't find the money anywhere, boss. Then I know of another way to get it. Now, Parson, where's that money? Start talking. You'll never get it. Oh, you won't talk, eh? Reckon we'll have to persuade you. Yeah, reckon this will oh. have to your mind. Oh. oh, my arm. Oh, let go of my arm. Have you had enough, Parson? Oh, no, 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 no. I'll tell you. I'll tell you where the money is. Oh, that's better, Parson. Well, start talking. Where's the cash? Oh, it's in that cupboard. The cupboard there in the wall. But we looked there, boss. Look again and look careful. But if this Parson Jasper's lying to us... Oh, there it is. See there. Way back on the side that opens toward the kitchen. No, no, no. You you have to reach way back. Look out. Oh, now. Oh, oh, I'm going to grab my gun, will you? Yes, oh. that'll teach you a lesson, Parson. Boy, you shot him. You shot the parson. And what if I did? You get that money and shut that big mouth of yours. Hey, boss. Boss, the widow's coming back. What? Come on, hurry, you butterfingered fools. Get that money. Hey, boss, we better feed her. She's bringing two men with her. Two men with her? Let's see. There, you're right, sir. They're coming up the road right now. Hey, boss, they're coming here. Come on, boys. Make a break for it. What about the money? Never mind that. Come on. Quick, the horse. Look, at those Jaspers coming out of the hill, those houses. Yeah, you've been having callers, Miss Burns. Don't give me a minute. They sure are leaving in a hurry. Yeah. Know them then, Mrs. Burns? Why, no, Lightman. Can't see from here. Lightman, I wonder if the parson's all right. Come on, Whitey. We'll see about this. You follow us, Mrs. Burns. You bet I will, Lightman. Whoa, honey. Whoa, boy. Whoa, boy. Easy now. Come on, Whitey. Follow me. Sure, I'm coming. Lightning. Yeah. Oh. It's got the parson. Come on, Lightning. Let's go after them poor No, Nobody, cats. wait, wait. Parson ain't dead, and I got an idea maybe he can tell us something that'll be worth more than all the riding you and me can do. Where to get you, Parson? Oh. Oh, here in the shoulder. But who? Who are you? I'm the United States Marshal. This is my deputy. Oh, Parson, they've shot you. Oh, just in the shoulder, Mr. Oh, Burns. Thank the Lord. Well, I'll have that wound dressed and fixed up in a hurry. Now, tell us what happened, Parson. Well, they came in, a bunch of them, all mad. Yeah? The leader jabbed a gun in my ribs, and 
He told me they were taking me out of town. Did you identify him by the voices? Oh, I don't think so, but the leader sounded like Reed, the, the gambler. Yeah? That's so. Then what happened, Parson? Well, then they they tried to find the money for the new church. If I had those teeth in, yes, but... And then I I thought maybe if I told them the money was in the kitchen cupboard... Yes, Parson, yes. Well, I thought then I could grab the gun, but... They drilled you? Yes. Parson, tell me, do they still think the money's hid here? Uh, yes, they... They didn't have a chance to look much. Come on, buddy. We better be riding. So, oh, sure, like this. And Mrs. Burns, take care of the parson and keep him out of sight. If anyone comes asking after him, just tell him he's dead. Dead? Like Do as I say, Mrs. Burns. I got a plan to catch them hombres, every one of them. Come on, Whitey. Let's go. What is Lightning's plan? Will he succeed in capturing Reed and his desperate band of outlaws? Part two of The Adventures of Lightning Jim follows immediately. And now for the adventures of Lightning Jim in The Parson Takes a Hand. A short time after the shooting and attempted holdup of the parson by Reed and his gang, a group of cowboys are lounging on the porch in front of the sheriff's office just across the street from the gold horseshoe when Lightning Jim and Whitey ride up. Oh, but Lightning, are you sure that your plan will work? Sure it will, Whitey. I know them, Jasper. You wait and see. Whoa, Thunder, whoa there, boy. Oh. Jeff! Hey, Sheriff! Is that horn for the sheriff? <laughs> don't you remember me? Well, I'll be a bull-legged horn, don't it? But ain't lightning, Jim, and why? Oh, that's your story. Boys, the United States Marshal. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, I call that a real welcome. How about you, Whitey? Oh, I see it so, too. You are very all glad to see you, all right. Whitey's right. But this ain't no time for cheering and fancy compliments. Hey, what's the matter with you? Get down off those horses and come right in. No, sir, Sheriff. We're here on mighty important business. The parson's been shot. The, the, the parson? Yes, Sheriff. I'd like to know who's doing a dirty low-down trick like that. We'd I'd... like to know, too. The parson. Is he dead? Yes, Sheriff. And a fine fellow he was, too. I sure am sorry to hear about that. The parson's done a lot of good around these parts. You know, he's kind of figuring on having a new church. Just a minute, Sheriff. There's something else you ought to know. You were planning on having a new church and was collecting money for it, wasn't yes, you? Yes, that's right. Well, the money's gone. Oh, the the yeah. money's gone, but... That's right. what I said. It's gone. Either them mavericks who shot the parson and carried it off with him, or else he had the money hid somewhere. And if he did, the secret of that hiding place died with him. Why, those Stephen Robin murders, I bet they got it with him. Sheriff... How soon do you reckon you can get a posse together? Boys, he asks us how soon we can get a posse well, together. Well, we're right now. We've got a posse right now. We're right now. We're right now. Hey, Marshal, which way did the killers go? Off toward the valley. We're riding after them killers, and we're riding now. Come on, boys. We're riding. That's, That's the way, Marshal. Come on. Come on, buddy. Let's go, Thunder. <laughs> So that's what they said. Are you sure, Kerr? Sure, boss. I was right there, standing outside the sheriff's office while the marshal and Lightning Jim Whipple was talking. Lightning Jim Whipple? Yeah. Boss, it must have been Lightning Jim and that sweet deputy of his what rode up with the widow bird. Yeah, Kendall, that's who it must have been. Well, let them ride. Let them ride all they want to. <laughs> uh, they'll never get us that way. They don't know we back trailing for town. In fact, that gives us just time to do what I've been thinking about. Now that the parson's out of the way. Now look ahead, boss. I don't want to be in on no more of your plans. Killing Parsons ain't in my line, and whatever else you mean to do... Shut up, Trigger. You're getting yellow. No. 
No, I ain't yellow. But I just don't like killing Parsons. See? But I didn't mean to kill him. Only he grabbed my gun and... Now listen, Trigger, I'm boss here, whether you like it or not. Say, I've got enough on each one of you to see you hanging on the end of a rope. All right. All right, boss. What's on your mind, boss? I've just been thinking. Sir, what was it he said about the money? The marshal said they didn't know where the money was. You hear that, boys? They can't find the money for the new church. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they can't figure out if we stole it or if the parson had it hid away someplace. <laughs> no, ain't that just too bad. Yeah, they was as mad as hornets, all of them. Mad, were they? <laughs> well, here's something that'll make them madder. <laughs> they will square things with that parson. And fix it so no other sky pilot will come to this town in a hurry. What are we going to do, boss? Work, and work fast before the marshals and the posse come back. Well, Sheriff, guess it's just about as far as White and me are going. Yeah, ring me safe for you to turn back now, Lightning. You understand your part of the plan, don't you, Sheriff? Sure do. You and White are sneaking back into the widow's house. That's right. Then we can make sure that nothing will happen to the parson or the widow. You and the posse is to hide in them cottonwoods across the road from the house. If I don't miss my guess, them skunks will make another try for the parson's money. Thinking we're out looking for their trail. <laughs> we'll be there, Marshal. Oh, sure, Sheriff. We'll be looking for you. And don't you forget to pour out to them trees when we yell for you. Don't worry about that, Whitey. When the shooting starts, we'll be there doing our share. That's right. You close in and surround them. And we're the boys that can do it, too. That's right, Sheriff. <laughs> sure. Come on in, Whitey. We're going back to the widows. Sure, Lightning. I'm ready. Then let's go thunder. Come on, boys. Feeling any better, Parson? Yes, Lightning. <laughs> Widow treated me like her own son. Fixed up my shoulder and put me to bed upstairs here. Yeah. Good-hearted old soul, the Widow. But, Lightning, are you sure your plan will work? Uh, well, if I know anything about outlaws. Yeah, figure it out for yourself. Them Jaspers think you're dead. And that they're the only ones that know where to find the money for the new church. Yes, I know, I never but... yet saw an outlaw who'd pass up a chance to get his hands on some cash. Yes, but how about you and Whitey? Us? Huh? They think we're out on the trail with the posse. Oh, but now the sheriff and his boys are over in the cottonwood across the road preparing a little surprise party for them. Then you really think the bandits will come back here for the money tonight? They sure will, and when they come, we'll be ready for them. Why, they keeping a the watch at the back of the house, and I'm keeping my eyes open right here. And I wish there was something I could do to help. Don't you worry about that, Parson. You just take it easy. Lightning, quick, come here. What's the matter, Miss Burns? Shh, there we are. What are you talking about? They're here, the bandits. I've heard him walking around in the kitchen. Come on. We'll have to look into this. I'm coming to. Oh, you ain't Parson. You're staying right there in bed. But I'm going to help. Parson, you do like the marshal says and stay there. You're a sick man. You can't go fighting bandits. Oh, I wish I was strong and well. You stay right where you are. The widow and me got some mighty important business to attend to. Come here to the top of the steps, right? Listen. You're right, Mrs. Burns. They're in the kitchen. Sounds like they're moving things in the cupboard. Yeah. Listen to them. Wonder how they got past Whitey. Maybe they sneaked up on him and captured him. Well, it can't be many of them. Or we'd have heard them over eyes. What are you going to do? I'm going down after them, Jasper, and catch them red-handed. I'm a coming to. You better stay up there where you're safe. No, sir, Lightning. I'm coming. Mrs. Burns, I say you stay. Look at this. A gun. And I know how to handle it, too. A lone woman got to know how to use a sick gun in these parts. All right. Come on, then. You can be more deputy. All right, Marshal. I'll blast it out side by side with you. Now you, you stay here at the foot of the stairs. I'm going into that kitchen alone. I'm coming with you. You're a deputy now. And you're obeying order. Stay here like I tell you, Deputy Burns. And don't come unless I call for you. All right, Marshal. But be careful. Reach for the sky, you. <laughs> My sister, no, don't shoot. It's me, Whitey. Mrs. Burns, come here, quick. One false move and I'll shoot to kill you. <laughs> Mrs. Burns, it's me, Whitey. Yes, Deputy Burns, you can put away your gun. 
It's just Whitey. And look at him standing there with one of your apple pies in his hand. Whitey Lawson, I was saving that pie for tomorrow. Yo, oh, but I just thought I'd sneak around quiet like and, uh, and see if the pie was in the good. <laughs> sneak around? Well, you made enough noise for a whole gang of outlaws. They're horses, too. Yo, oh, well, I just thought that I... Whitey, you have a lot to learn about sneaking pies. Yo, I guess so. Hey, Whitey, you were supposed to be watching the back of the house for them bandits. Well, I thought I could uh, see you just well while I was eating. Whitey you know, Lawson. You're the doggone deputy marshal I ever did see. He likes him. Look out of the window there. Them Jaspers are coming toward the horse. All right, buddy. It's a bandit. Swing open the door a little. No, I like it. And you, Deputy Burns, you go upstairs and take care of the park. Yes, Marshal. I'll take care of him. Look, like him. Here they come. All right, buddy. Take him up, you polecat. Reach for the sky. Hey, hey, Hold on, Run for it, fellas. Run for Come it. Come on, ma'am. There's only two of them. All right, Sheriff. Let him have it. Hey, hey, boys. No use for surrounded. We give up. We give up, Michael. Drop your guns, boys. All right. Walk this way with your hands reaching for the sky. Well, I can... I guess we got him this time, didn't we? Yes, Sheriff. Not one of them got away. And look, the cowardly pole catch his mask. We'll soon find out who they are, Sheriff. There. Read the gambler. Yeah. Read. Bye, bye, you good on sneaking worthless yes, but Put the masks on your faces so you could rob the party. You're right, Whitey. Of all the yellow-hearted mavericks I've seen, these are the worst. You didn't dare to come out and fight, did you, Reed? <laughs> and you had to pick on a parson. Sheriff, you can take your prisoners. Take them away and lock them up. You bet we will, Lightning. All right, boys, round up these coyotes. Yeah. We're taking them to jail. Come on, Come on. Say, Lightning, excuse me, but uh, I got to go back to the horse now. Why? What's the rush, Whitey? Well, I got to finish the widow's pies. <laughs> And so ends another thrilling chapter in the lives of those two famous marshals, Lightning Jim Whipple and Whitey Larson. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and thanks for listening.